Cropping in Adobe Camera Raw can give you a second chance to frame your images. It can help you remove distracting backgrounds, correct framing mistakes, or fix unbalanced images. In this shot of the cat sleeping in the window, I really wanted to capture the little nose pressed up against the glass and how content in the sunshine this cat seemed. But the windowsill has some gorgeous purple flowers. However, this whole object is completely distracting to me. Also in the upper right corner of the frame, there's a piece of wood or an object that's also distracting. So we're losing focus on the precious cat. I've already done the camera correction, the color, contrast, clarity, and so on. So I'm going to double click on this raw file. And I have my clipping warning on, so I'll turn it off. These objects are getting blown out, but they're not paramount to the scene, and I'm not losing detail in the fur, so I'm going to let them go. With the Crop tool in Adobe Camera Raw, you'll notice it's across the top, and all these are different tools you can use even before you arrive in Photoshop. With the Crop tool, I'm going to first try to do a closer crop to the cat itself. And already a portion of the distracting objects are removed. But as someone who really wants to draw the viewer's eye to what I was trying to capture, I like to turn on the rule of thirds. So I can choose Show Overlay. With Show Overlay on, I really want the cat's head in this PowerPoint at the intersection of one of the guidelines. The eye is drawn there. And I did want to show a bit of the girth of the cat. So I can continue to play and possibly crop a little bit closer. But do keep in mind, you need larger images when you're doing a crop. So after you finish, there's still enough detail to see what you intended to show in the shot. Also, if you're going to have the image printed, you may want to choose ratios, like a 4 by 5 or 5 by 7. A lot of the photo developing places have fixed ratios which work well. So if I choose 4 by 5 or 4 to 5, I lose a little bit of the right edge so I can decide whether to go right or left to still keep the cat's face as the subject or the framed object. So I'm happy with this. I'll hit Done. And if I come back to Bridge, there you could see the tighter cropped shot. And here was the original camera JPEG. So the color is a lot better. I can really feel myself looking at the cat nestled up in the sunshine in the window. The last thing I'll do, just as a little bonus, is remove this bit of something on the window. So there is a tool in Photoshop called Spot Removal. And with this Spot Removal, I can click on a given spot, and it's showing me that this was the bad, and this is the good. That's what it's using to repair. I could move that to other areas to get different spots of fur to use to correct that portion. And I think I'm happy with that. So again, I'll hit Done. Now, the next way you may want to crop an image, I always find it really interesting when I get people talking, taking studio shots, and then I get a great reaction out of one of the three. So, although I love this guy's reaction, I really love the laugh on the guy in the center. This was only shot in JPEG. I had accidentally turned off shooting in RAW when I started, but I still used File, Open in Camera Raw to do the correction. If I clear out the settings, that's how bad it was. I go back to Edit, Develop Settings, paste back what I had done, and click OK. Here's what I brought it to in just a minute or two. I'm going to double click to open it in Camera Raw. I'll grab my Crop tool again, and now I want to focus in on this guy. But my crop tool is still locked to that ratio I had earlier, and he's going to use this shot for social media. So I can choose normal and decide exactly where and how I'd like to crop it. My goal is really just to get a head and shoulder shot. So I'm attempting to frame it a bit more centered. 
Now I might want to call attention to his face and dim out some of the details at the edge. That's when post-crop vignetting can really help. So if I go to Effects, there is something called post-crop vignetting, which will create an effect called burning the corners. So I can blur everything out and get a white focus, or go the opposite direction, burn everything out and get a dark focus, really almost putting a spotlight on him. In fact, I could crop a little bit tighter, and the spotlight mostly affects his face drawing the viewer's eye there. So I can choose a lighter amount, and if you do this subtly, it's barely noticeable. I could change the midpoint, pulling it closer or farther away from his face. I can also change the roundness, and I actually like the roundness altered with no feather for some interesting frames. You can make it look like an old-time television screen with this darker amount, or even a piece of film. Change the midpoint to go tighter or further away, and it's a really interesting border, I think, for social media. So I think in the end, that's what I'll leave it on. I'll click Done, come back, and here is my end result. A group shot cropped down to one individual person with, in my opinion, what was a great reaction. So take some time, reevaluate some of the images that you've shot, and see if cropping will help result in a better photo overall. The more you crop, the better you'll get at framing your initial images, and ultimately, the less you may need to crop because you're learning what works when you're taking the original photo. So this has been Cropping Using Adobe Camera Raw.